What's up y'all? This is John Helm with Helmwood Shop and Smithy, back with another knife making video. I have a pretty exciting commission right now. It's going to be a big Tonto knife. Uh, but it's going to be kind of a westernized, modernized version of it. But this one is going to be different. It's going to be a seven layer billet with a tricolor Damascus core. Pretty excited about this build. It's an exciting build. So if you enjoy it, or if you want to see me finish this build, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications button so you can see when those videos come out. So for now, let's head over to the vise and start cutting up some steel for this Damascus billet. All right, so kicking things off. I'm just going to cut off some four and a half inch sections of uh, ADC RV2, 1084, and 15 and 20. This is uh, one tenth of an inch by one and a half inch bar stock. So I cut up a bunch of those to make a tritone Damascus billet. I cut up way more than I needed. Figured um, while I'm doing it, I might as well make a whole bunch of Damascus just in case somebody wants some. Uh, and then here I'm just cleaning up the edges and grinding off any mill scale that's on there. You want to make sure your steel is nice and clean and smooth so that the forge welding can go nicely. And here I'm wiping off uh, those pieces with some acetone just to make sure that there's no excessive oils or anything on there that could stop your weld from sticking. Toss in the vise and arc weld them together. I really need to work on my welding skills. There was a point where I was all right at it, uh, and I'm no longer at that point. <laughs> I guess you know, use it, you lose it, and I just don't do a lot of welding. I don't really have a lot of reason to. So I toss the handle on it, and then I head over to my buddy Jesse's shop, which uh, I'll leave a link in the description. He recently put up a uh, knife maker page on Facebook. You should go check him out. He makes some cool stuff. He's a nice guy. Nice enough to let me use his. Uh, forge press so I certainly appreciate that and look at that man that is so satisfying it just did what would take me probably 30 or 40 minutes of hand forging to do and you know the first three presses it was like five seconds it's insane I really need to save up some money and get one of these things but they are prohibitively expensive I was really amazed I figured you'd be able to get a little one for cheap, and that is not the case. <laughs> so uh, here I am grinding off that Damascus billet, or a, a chunk of it anyway, to use as the core in our San Mai. By the way, I keep referring to this as a San Mai just because I don't know what else to call it. It's going to have seven layers though, and San Mai means three layers, so obviously it's not San Mai. Um, here I'm just making sure it's nice and flat. You don't want to have any voids in your billet. And now I'm stacking it up. So the outside is mild steel, and then I have 1084, ADC RV2, and then the core is that big chunk of Damascus. And I will just lather, rinse, repeat here, just like I did on the first Damascus billet. Stick them together, stick a handle on it. And squish it together. Surprisingly, uh, this guy Jesse, he has a really tiny one burner forge. I think it's one of those uh, just cheapy Amazon or eBay ones that you can get for a hundred or so dollars. Uh, that sucker will bring a six or seven pound billet up to forge welding temp, no problem. It burns. It's probably a gas hog, but it, it's a decent little forge, especially for what he paid for it. So now I'm back in my garage. And uh, I almost said shop. I have to keep myself humble and remind me that I'm just a dude working in my garage. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm going to forge this down so I want to make sure that I get rid of any delaminations or cracks uh, along the edges of it. So I grind that down with a 36 grit metal grinding wheel and then I use a 60 grit flap disc on the angle grinder to smooth it out. That way I can see any little tiny cracks. When you have a rough finish on there you can't really give it a good inspection. And of course we're going to lose both ends, they never stick that well. So I cut this one at a little bit of an angle, just to make forging in the tip easier. And we're off. 
get the forge lit. Now, because of my new uh, garage setup and the new forge, it I have to leave the garage door all the way open, which it didn't have to do with my coal forge. So um, it presents an issue where I can't really tell how hot the steel is. Now, luckily, I can tell inside the forge because the light inside the forge doesn't really change. Uh, it doesn't really let light in, and it's illuminated by the propane flame. So um, I can judge it for heat treat just fine. Um, of course, there's a little bit of a learning curve, but you just use a couple test pieces and a magnet, and you can figure it out pretty quickly. Here, I'm just drawing it out, trying to get a nice cohesive thickness and shape to it. I also wanted to upset the material a little bit. I think I forged it just a little bit too thin on the hydraulic press because the outside is always really screwed up when you um, do a lot of forge welding, with the flux and all the heat and scale. So uh, it's better to leave them a little bit on the thick side, let's say about 5 sixteenths of an inch. So when I forged this down to be in about an inch and a quarter wide, uh, since it's a Tonto, I went ahead and let it thicken up and I didn't flatten it out all the way. So. We probably have about 5 sixteenths of an inch on it now. And I'm just putting in the tang here. This forging went very well. Um, of course, I have my anvil in a new location as well, since I want to have it right next to the forge. And so it's no longer bolted onto the floor. It's just sitting there. And um, this is temporary. I'm going to have to figure out a new solution for this because it definitely doesn't transfer the energy into the workpiece as well as it used to it was noticeably slower to move steel. But it was also noticeably quieter, which I thought was really strange. Um, but, hey, I'll allow it. In here, I'm just gonna do some real quick rough profiling with that grinding disc. And then I'll take off all the scale and flatten it out. Now, I don't want to grind too much on the outside of this because it has seven layers and I want all of them to be visible in the finished product. So I go ahead and throw it in some ferric and give it a good etch. That way if I look at the edge, I can see exactly where the mild steel is on the outside and where my hardenable core is. Um, luckily, it was pretty even. <laughs> um, I paid attention to forging somewhat evenly between both sides of the uh, of the billet while I was forging up the blade shape. And uh, I did that intentionally because I didn't want to run into a situation where I had a ton of mild steel on one side and not very much on the other, uh, which can happen. So here I'm putting in the bevel and I find a big nasty delamination. I mean, that is a disgusting looking delamination. And I really didn't want to quench with any of that left, but I also didn't want to grind the blade all the way down before I quench because it would warp. So, after I drilled a hole here, which I cut out most of the footage because it took me like 10 minutes <laughs> to get that tank soft enough, I decided to go ahead and quench with just the ass end of that delamination still present in the blade, which was risky. It could definitely open up further in the quench, and I believe it actually did open up a little bit further, uh, but I was able to take care of it in the end. Ultimately, the big issue with this first quench was the other problem that I thought it was, uh, it was the warp. <laughs> it was nice and hard. It was initially straight, but as it cooled, it warped a lot. So, I went ahead and normalized it again. It looks like my steel is black, but it is not. It's just the bright daylight. And then I requenched. This time when I requenched, I set it back on the anvil with the railroad type plate and the kettlebell on top of it and kept it nice and straight. While it cooled, I left it in the vise because uh, it didn't warp last time until after it was already about halfway cool. And it still wound up with a very slight warp in it, but this time it's totally manageable. You can see it right there. Yeah, that's nothing I can't deal with. So back to the grinder. First I just knocked down some scale off of the bevels. Uh, just to make sure that everything is lined up pretty decently before I go off and hit the flats. There we go. So of course I take all the scale off with an old beater belt. You don't want to use a sharp belt for that. The scale will ruin your sharp belt. And then I flatten it on the disc grinder. 
This little disc grinder is super handy to have around and you can pick up a brand new one that is not on sale for about 200 bucks. So if you're a knife maker and you don't have one, I would highly recommend you go pick one up from Harbor Freight. Uh, I use it all the time. It saves me a ton of time. It's just, it's really handy to have around. And then I grind that down. That's up to, uh, I believe, a 120 finish. But this bevel grind was going so well, I decided I'm gonna do something I don't typically do, and I went ahead and tried to get it flat and bring it up to 200 grit. Sorry, 240 grit. <clears throat> um, I usually just grind it up to 60 and then move on to hand sanding. But this time, I just wanted to see if I could get one that looked good enough to go out the door off of the belt. And um, I wouldn't do it on this knife because it is gonna be so cool and have those patterns. But if it was just a utility knife, it was, I think, uh, good enough to just leave it as it was. I was, I was pretty proud of myself. <laughs> I've never been able to do that before, but uh, grinding this bevel went particularly well. Hopefully it's because I'm getting better, not because I got lucky. So I did a little test etch. You can see the pattern there it looks pretty snazzy, but it doesn't even look close to as cool as it's gonna because I go ahead and hand sand this thing. I start with 240, and then I go 400, 800, and 1500 grit. And through this process, I was able to get rid of all of the delaminations in the blade. I found a couple other small inclusions here and there. I was able to get rid of all of them, still leave plenty of thickness on the spine. Toss in some ferric, periodically clean it off with some steel wool. And after it's been in there for about half an hour, I took it out, put it in some vinegar overnight, and then rub it with some polishing compound. And look at that, it is a gorgeous blade. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, and you want to see me finish this build, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications bell so you can see when I come out with new videos. And thank you all very much for watching. Have a good one.